Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to our Terra Inaka life. Hey everyone, I figured something that would be fun to do is a bit of Akia window shopping. So taking some of the things that I talked about in the last couple of videos and some of the things I've learned and just having a look at the Akia bank and some houses that are available around the place to see what's around and to try and study what the house is like, what the area is like. And uh, another thing just to update, we've uh, we've started doing tours, guided tours around our area here of the beautiful Mount Horaiji. So I'll put a link in the description that you should definitely have a look at. But yeah, today we'll be uh, looking through some of the Akia websites, some of the other websites that I know to get different data about the house and the land and things like that, and the cities and uh, getting an idea for what a place might be like so that if you were going to look for an Akia, uh, it might give you some help of what to look for, what sites you might use, things like that. What I thought I'd do is I'd start by looking for some Akia and the Aomori area, um, just for somewhere that's completely different to here. So I've, I've got my search results for Akia, and there's a couple of good websites. Like Some of them are better than others for different areas, but we'll just go with this one, because it's a pretty big company, I think. Um, and I've already searched for Aomori Ken, and if I drill down a bit more, I wanted to try and find something in Mutsu, because that place seems kind of interesting. It's uh, It's got a lake that is kind of hell lake, so that's an interesting thing to me. So we'll see what places are around. This one here, if I zoom in a bit more, this one here could be interesting. That's pretty cheap. To put it in rough numbers, it might be like uh, $18,000. And it's it's kind of modern looking. It's not really like a kominka or anything. It's got a fair bit of land. That's interesting. That one there is very cheap. Hatijuman. It's like $8,000. This one here is not looking so good. It's nearly $70,000. I wonder why maybe the house is in a good spot. I feel like this one might be interesting. Let's have a look. Okay, so the house is in much better shape than I thought. It's just the picture is a bit shiny. Uh, interesting. A common thing about this kind of website is that they'll have almost no photos, and the photos suck. Uh, it's it's even worse than the rental houses in Australia. There's a, a couple of interesting things about this house. It seems reasonably modern, to be honest. Like, I'm just going to draw on the screen for a second. You've got like these little, I think they're the little air vents that are pretty common these days. And this, I mean, the shape of the house is very modern and it's on a big um, concrete foundation and everything. These types of doors, they look pretty, you know, relatively new. Uh, and the way the roof is done here, everything is sealed off really well. So I wonder, this is probably just an Akia that, is because someone had to go to a nursing home and couldn't live there anymore. The ceiling looks quite modern. The windows and the fittings look reasonably modern. There's some stuff on the floor there, like an animal's been living there, but everything looks reasonably clean. It's a reasonably modern kitchen too. The classic, like, massive amount of oil stain on the wall or mold next to the 
next to the hot plate there, that's classic. It's got the umeshu little hole in the floor. It looks pretty modern. It looks about the same age as the apartment I lived in in Tokyo, which is, I think, late 80s. Here's the washitsu. It looks reasonable. It's got those really annoying frosted glass windows, though, where you can't actually see outside because, you know, you need privacy so much that you can't see outside. Uh, if if anyone knows the book The Twits by, I think, Roald Dahl, I think of that every time I see this super frosted glass in Japan. That, that fusuma there, that sliding door with the painting on it, I know a lot of that was mass-produced, and still might be mass produced, but that looks pretty nice. All right. So let's have a look at the plan here. That's kind of interesting. So it's a pretty big house, really. It's got I I believe from the drawing like this is one of these cases where this is a a men's bathroom just it's got like a urinal and then you've got a normal toilet there and then lots of closets or shires things like that and it's got I believe the whole two doors thing for the um for the fact it's so cold there they generally have two doors but yeah it's pretty big to be honest so two two japanese style rooms and two western style rooms and a dining kitchen that's a pretty reasonably sized house and I mean, that's all the pictures we're going to get, really. Um, I can already see, like, of course, the the grass is really overgrown, if you could call that grass. The kind of shrub is already pretty overgrown. But considering that it hasn't been completely taken over by massive plants, that's hopefully pretty good, especially, I think, for the foundation and things like that. If there aren't massive plants growing all around it, that's got to be a good thing. We can always have a look. Yeah, we'll have a look at a, a map in a second where this is. Ah, oh, built in 1998. That's reasonably modern. 4DK, of course. Uh, I'm just going to use my cheat thing here. Total floor area. Okay, so it's not... A massive house, but it's still pretty huge. And it comes with a lot of land. I'm guessing this is the... Yeah. So, over a thousand meters squared. So there's going to be some, hopefully, consistent area around this that comes with it. Um, propane gas. Uh, Sentaki, the washing machine, is inside. What is this one here? Private garden, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so like it. It's got public water and everything. What's this one here? Is this. Of course, yeah, you own the land. <laughs> there must be some specific reason why that option is there for some people that maybe don't own the land they're buying. Uh, building to land ratio, 70%. That seems pretty cool if you can grow things on this land. Oh, so they can rent this one out. That's pretty cool. Monthly for around, I don't know, $600-ish per month. I think... That's not too bad if you wanted to try it out, but I guess buying it for 70000 on paper that doesn't sound too bad, but if you wanted to get an idea of what it's like, 
then you really would want to probably experience that. This, uh, this I really enjoy how it gives you a score, but I don't enjoy how it's not telling us exactly where the house is. <laughs> um, do you want to tell us why? Okay, Dosha Sai Guy, the like landslide risk is the biggest one there. And earthquakes. And liquefaction, yeah. So it's like, it's earthquake related stuff. All right, we can go and have a closer look at this one because it gives us an address. We can go and check this out. So I'm gonna take this and swap over to here. Let's open up Google Maps. Put in our address. That's a strange street view picture. Is that accurate? It must be behind there. Or the house is newer than the street view. I'm not sure what's going on there. Ah, right, there it is. Okay. So... It probably hasn't been empty for too long. And it's quite modern and... can see a bit more now. It's got that classic modern Japanese house siding. If it was built in 1998 though, I think that means that for earthquakes itself, the house should kind of be okay. Um, it's built during a time where the, the restrictions for building codes and things like that were much more strict. They became much more strict after the 80s. And then I think once again, the nineties or something, but it's, it's probably pretty strong against earthquakes. The roof looks, looks pretty strong. I think they do get a fair bit of snow here, but not as much as Niigata and stuff. You can see that there's a fair bit of farming that was going on around here. There's some other houses that are pretty close by or sheds, things like that. There's at least, uh, I see a company building and someone dismantling a house or cleaning up, not sure. I wonder if all of this belongs to the same family or if some of these buildings come with the house. Okay, there's a little river next to it. It does look like reasonably flat land, which is um, a good thing in some ways. And I'm not seeing, at least at the moment, I'm not seeing any like rice fields, which means that this may be an easier <laughs> place to buy. All right, let's have a look from the top. Of course, it's on a super dark bit. Yeah, okay, it's in a super dark bit there. Um, right, well, it said it came with a thousand square meters. So I'm wondering if that land behind it is part of it. So if we have a look here, I'm just going to draw on the screen again. This is the house. It says that the land is here, but I think it must be, I'm assuming that the land boundary must come around maybe this way. Maybe it's, it's coming down there. The land across the little river 
so this this area here seem to be someone else's like generally a river is probably a pretty strong border between someone's land and there were rice fields there so we would hope it doesn't come with it i do see rice fields on the other side here i wonder if this land around here comes with it which means there could be rice field or it could not sure it could come with some of the land over here if the the person that was living in this house owned the company that was obviously running in this area it's better than some other places i've seen and because it's possible to rent this house it means that if someone did want to live here they could rent it see what the land is like see if they could look after it and then if it was possible to look after it there is possibly a way there to actually i don't know convince the local farming people that you know what you're doing enough to buy it if it comes with a limited amount of of rice field and farmland it's um it's strange shapes which is not uncommon it's got a lot of trees it does seem to be very flat let's have a look this is kind of my first tool here this is um like a geological uh survey maps system that the japanese government has made and unlike some other things made by the japanese government this one's actually really nice to use uh it's got a lot of nice features where are we here we're at this part of mutsu and the the hell lake I was talking about is is around the middle of the screen right now. That's the uh kind of hell lake. Let's have a look actually. Can I twist this down? Does water from the hell lake flow past this house? Hmm. There is a There is a chance that some of the water draining out of the hell lake that goes through the kind of bridge to hell. Um, I wonder if it'll let me zoom in or not. This, um, this red bridge here is kind of in some ways considered the, the bridge to heaven or hell. And this is kind of like the hell river running through it. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, I'd like it if you could let me get out of Street View. Okay. So yeah, there's a there's a funny little thing there that perhaps the uh, water from the Hell Lake is flowing next to the house. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, let's see where we were here. So this website's pretty good. Um, I'll try and remember to link to it in the description. Uh, it's got different options. It's got an English one, which, you know, is not very highly detailed, as you can see. But if we go to satellite here, this is showing us... Oh, this one's actually quite a lot better. Sometimes it's not in Google, but... I'll just put the crosshairs over the house we were looking at. It seems like there is a bit of rice paddy there. But the shape of the other areas makes me think that most of it is not registered as rice paddy. Some of it might be registered as hatake, like kind of um, farmland, but sort of orchard or uh, field, not rice paddy, which is its own classification. So what we can do with this website here, we can put on various different ways of looking at the data, but I want to look at this one, showing the topographical view. And wow, it's very flat. That is really quite flat. It's got almost no slope to it at all by the looks of it that is kind of a good thing for the sake of um 
if you if you don't want to walk up hills a lot or, or push things up and down hills and stuff like that, like I'm doing here all the time, this might be a good place. I think also if someone's a bit older, it's probably a bit better. It does come with downsides, though, uh, exactly like we saw before. If we come down to the house kind of risk score thing here, uh, ground li liquefaction and... Um, like earthquake problems, things like that. And it also has Dosha side guy, like the, the mud slides. These things are at least, especially the ground liquefaction, that is much more likely to happen if you're in a flat area where the water just sits in the ground and it can't drain out quickly. The, the mud slide part comes from the fact that it's next to this creek. Um, and if we go back to the satellite view, I can't really easily see the creek as it goes off up into the hill, but there clearly is, uh, this one near the cross here at the moment, there clearly is a creek that goes up quite a way. So if you had a typhoon come through or lots of storms or um, things like that, if this water catchment gets uh, too full, you're going to have problems. Okay, no, this doesn't have water coming from the hell lake going through it, so that might be a good thing. Um, yeah, that's really quite flat. It's more flat than I thought it might be, but it's probably good for farming, to be honest. If it's more flat, you've got more choice for whatever the hell you want to do on your land. Uh, there is something else I wanted to just have a look at about this area, because this is Mutsu Shi, like Mutsu City. Um, if we just have a search for Mutsu City, let's see if there's anything we can find out about this city from their own websites and things like that that might tell us if it could be an interesting place to live. So yeah, merger of two towns. It is pretty cool how it's a town with a only Hiragana name. Seems it was the only one. Uh, it ate a bunch of smaller towns. Bordered by the Tsugaru Strait in the north and Mutsubei in the south, giving it a unique topography. In the middle of the city you'll find Mount Kamafuse, home to Osorezan, Mount Fia, one of the three most sacred places in Japan. Yeah, that's uh, sacred, but also for some people a bit spooky. It's It's got a really interesting story to it. It would be pretty cool to, to be near enough that you could see it in all the seasons. So yeah, of course, we're up the top of Japan. Has a cool climate covered with snow from mid-December through to late March. However, it is not considered a heavy snowfall area. So that's probably a very nice thing compared to somewhere like Niigata. If you're not, if you're like me and you're not really cool with the idea of getting out and poking your roof with a stick every morning. I, I can understand how it's fun for a little while. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not a morning person. In summer, a cool wind called the Yamase gives Mutsu a moderate climate, making it an easy place to live. We can have a look at that a bit more in a second, because cool can mean different things in summer here. Wildlife. Suitable habitat for a distinct number of wildlife. Japanese macaque, also known as the snow monkey, is the northernmost living monkey in the world. So they've got the monkeys there as well. It's just like here, Kamoshka are around as well. Um, swans. Okay, so yeah, it's probably nearly standard Japanese kind of city, except much colder. But we can see, is there anything here that maybe stands out to us as something special? I mean, it looks like a quite pretty area. That's the uh, the big lake I was talking about there, which looks quite pretty, but has a very intense backstory to it. Okay, we've got some nice sakura. 
I mean, as far as Japanese city council website goes, it looks pretty. It looks pretty standard. It doesn't look like the whole town is dying out,、um, which reminds me that something we should do is have a look at this website here and see just what is happening with the population in this part of Japan. So we want Mutsu. We'll come down to Mutsu City. It's a pretty huge city. Fifty-four thousand people. Population density is not too bad. Sixty-two people per kilometer square, and minus one point six population change. So that's kind of a A big factor that is going to be a problem in the future for many places, and I think the lowest I've seen is like minus three, and that's for one of the towns near here that unfortunately is very beautiful and very nice, but it's just up deep in the mountains, so it, it's having some issues with attracting people and things like that. And minus three percent population change is a pretty massive deal when it comes to. Aging population, things like that. But one point five percent here. To be honest, like you can see, except for some rare cases, almost all of、um, Japan is is blue, which in this case means the population is decreasing, and the. Area I was talking about near us, it's very nice, but it's having a big change. Is um down here? It's not showing up well because that's all right. Well, it's showing Hamamatsu, but that's not Hamamatsu. Let's go back up to Mutsu where we were looking at. I don't want Aomori. I want Mutsu. Okay. So yeah, minus one point six population change is not too bad. Another massive thing that we need to look at, really important thing, is the amount of people over the age of sixty-five. And thirty-four percent is actually not too bad. Only thirty-four percent of people in Mutsu are over the age of thirty-five. That's much better than I thought. You'll notice how. There are places on this map where it's much more red than this. As a a comparison, I will come down to the town that I know is really having problems near us. It is not Hamamatsu. I want this one. It doesn't want to let me choose it. It's so bad. I don't want Toyota. I want this one. It doesn't even want to let me choose that town. All right, I'm gonna have to find it in the big list.、Uh, Shinshiro is there, and Shinshiro is minus one point two, which isn't so bad. Okay, this is the one I wanted to look at. So minus two point eight population change. It's you know just over a percentage in difference. But when you look at the、um, the amount of people aged over sixty five, it's over fifty percent in this area just north of where I live. That's a pretty big deal, to be honest. It's something that will cause quite a few problems later on. And coming back up to coming back up to Mutsu, it's only thirty four percent. That is going to make life a little bit easier in the future, when it comes to、um, healthcare and、uh, taxes, social security, that kind of thing. We look at how many foreign people there are. It seems zero, zero point two nine percent foreign percent、uh, foreign citizens. That's you know not that unusual. It's Japan, but yeah, this website's very nice because.、Um, It lets you 
look at many different levels and different types of data about different places in Japan, and especially the population change and、uh, the amount of people over the age of 65. Those are things that are going to affect you in the future if you get really settled into some of these places. So, again, with this house, you know, it seems like a nice house. It's quite a new house. It's not mega expensive. It seems like it's in a reasonable place.、Um, the town seems to be in reasonably good shape when it comes to aging population and population decline. And it's got some nice things to look at in the area.、Um, if we go back to the map here. It was reasonably flat, which, you know, you can manage and it's probably quite easy to live on. You just have to be careful if it rained a lot and there was a massive earthquake. But a house of that age is probably pretty good because of just the time it was built. So that's not too bad of a deal. The next thing we really should be looking at, though, to be honest, I, my standards are messed up because I'm Australian. I don't mind being kind of far away from, uh, You know, supermarkets and things like that. But we should have a look at those kind of lifelines here. So its own little village is up here. It's got, oh, it's got two roads through it. So there is, there is, I'm just going to draw that on the screen. From what I can see, I don't know about the quality of, of this road, but it's got this road to get in and this road to get in, which means that. You shouldn't really ever get completely stuck. I might put it in 3D view a little bit just so we can try and see. Oh, those, those hills are tiny. I don't think that's too much of an issue. Even if you got mega stuck and you had to walk, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, that's, that's manageable. So those, those roads seem quite reasonable. They're going through lots of forests.、Um, The air should be reasonably clean there. It's got quite a bit of forest around. It's not all natural forest. There is some Sugi forest there, I can see. But when you get towards the north of Japan, at least from, from my memory of the north of Japan, you seem to have more. Like conifers and, and pine trees, anyway, just because of the, the temperatures. You can see in this direction there's a lot of、um, sugi and probably hinoki, a lot, of, a lot of artificial lines in the landscape that suggest that you know, that's, that's artificial plantation forest, which is not great, but the fact that this is not very hilly means that maybe there's not too much of an issue from that. If we keep having a look around, There's a, a Lawson down here. So that's pretty good. If I,、um, I want to go back to looking at our spot here. I can go directions. Let's see. 11, 11 minute drive to the Combini. That's about the same as here. That's very, very livable. That's still very easy to handle. Maybe this little township, which is the closest little township. Well, this, this one up here is definitely the better one, the closer one. Let's have a look to see where's the supermarkets. Okay. This area down here, the actual Mutsu. Town, I believe this is the actual Mutsu city where the whole area's name comes from, would have the bigger supermarkets just because it's a bigger place. These don't seem like big chain supermarkets, but maybe they are up that far north. I have no idea. There you go, there's some snow. That, that's pretty good. That supermarket's open until 10 p.m. and it's got a pharmacy next to it, which is useful. I see at one point it was open until 9 p.m. But they got your 
sushi you can buy for dinner and all the normal things. That's a reasonably that's a reasonably big supermarket. Look at that. That's huge. That'd be plenty. It's bigger than the one that we've got close to us. And if I get directions and come back to our village here. How far away is that? 18 minutes. That is not too bad for a big weekly shop. I think people in a lot of Western countries drive further than that and they're stuck in traffic for longer than that. That's pretty good. I would hazard a guess that when you're living in a place like this, that is this, I guess, remote compared to a lot of Japan, you're not going to be too concerned about uh, crime and where the police are. Honestly, you probably want the police to stay away from you anyway if you're a foreign person, but um, something that people do care about is hospital. I guess there is one, exactly one hospital in the area. There may be clinics around here. There are almost always clinics, but clinics are, are a bit inconsistent of when they can actually treat you. Um, often they can't treat you in the middle of the night, things like that. But if you, for example, I don't know, fell off a motorbike or um, had a tree fall on your leg and you had to go to a major hospital, you would drive this way around the mountain into town. It doesn't seem too bad. Half an hour is honestly better than, better than here. So I would, I would hope that that hospital is reasonable. Um, but that situation's even better than where I am here and I'm in central Japan. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's supermarkets and hospitals. Um, there's not really any train stations here or, or public transport. I mean, this is, you know, Inaka. You're not going to have much of that, but there is a train station or two down here in this bigger city area. And that's about, what, half an hour or something away? That's not too bad. I wonder how common, or how often the trains are. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's about the same as here. Like, absolutely terrible. Um, hardly any trains. But there is a train there, which is good. There is, yeah, at least like a train that exists. Most people here would be driving cars. And there is a highway, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, which is, you know, reasonable. And it looks pretty nice. I think something else to check. I mean, if I, if I wanted a modern type of house and I was, you know, looking around and I had this much money and I was I was looking for kind of an easier place to move into the age of this house means that you don't really have to do much to this place to move in like it's it's quite new and the the land around it looks pretty easy to work with um like this street this is pretty quaint it's uh I'm sure you'd have to get along with the neighbors pretty well but it's hopefully not that difficult to do but you know little nice basic house the land is pretty flat. The house is new. I don't think there's really that much you'd have to do to a house like that to um to live in it quite comfortably. So maybe it's worth spending the what seventy or eighty thousand for the house itself. There would probably be about ten thousand more on um various other costs and charges and things. There's a graveyard that is not next to the house, so that's that's a good thing. Um, this is someone else's land, but you can see how flat it is. Yeah, this is a reasonable little place. Nice little quaint roads. Farming type community. 
the roads look like they're in pretty good condition. I want to check the, what do the roads get like when we get a bit closer to the forest here? Ah, oh, I guess someone cut that forest. This is one lane, but it's not a squiggly mountain road and it looks like you can just easily pull off to the side. So that's considerably easier than somewhere like where I live. That's not too bad. Yeah, if I was looking for somewhere quite easy to live, I think I'd probably add this to my uh, my kind of short list of somewhere to look at. If I if I like the look of of northern Almori, ah, there is one thing we need to check here. Something I forgot was um. See if we can get some climate data on Mutsu. Mutsu Aomori. Climate. Okay, this is the one that... Okay, here we go. This is something that I, I really have found myself looking at a lot in Japan. For where I live and for other places. This year is absolutely messed up and totally not accurate because it's the hottest summer ever or whatever it's just stupid but you know averages are averages um the temperatures in winter are an important thing the average low i'm just going to draw on the screen the average low is not that bad in winter to be honest looking at the average low for kind of where I would consider winter to start, maybe you know, November. The average though is only 2.1. Minus 2.5 in December. I guess that minus temperatures goes all the way until March, but I mean, that's kind of similar to here. The average being this low means that, of course, it does get a fair bit colder than this, but I've seen places that are much colder. You would need heating oil and things like that all the time, but the houses, especially that kind of house of that age, the insulation in it would be pretty good. So, I mean, as far as, um, as far as winter temperatures go, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Summer is another thing. I'm not a fan of summer. So this weather is actually pretty good at the start. Hopefully you can see that, that color is not so good. Uh, at the start of kind of rainy season time until the end of where it kind of starts feeling hot, like the average high being 24 or 25-ish degrees in July and August, that's pretty comfortable. That seems pretty livable. The amount of rain as well, just looking at that that green line there, the amount of rain, you can see that like there's no months that are massively high compared to the others, so it, it probably doesn't get that many typhoons or massive storms, things like that. Um, it does get a fair bit of snow. Is that like over a... over a meter of snow for two of those months, but that seems manageable that's not that bad that's not like um yeah again places in niigata where it's crazy the amount of precipitation days so like when we start looking down here this kind of area here that's not too bad that's that honestly sounds like it gets a fair bit of sun and is quite comfortable there are quite a few snowy days January. The humidity here is something that I feel is a bit intense. I mean, in summer, around here, I mean, it's always going to be pretty humid. But it seems kind of 
humid in the cold times as well. It might just be because of the snow. I'm not quite sure. Maybe maybe there's something in this, this town that might make mold a bit harder to fight. Coming back and looking at the house, this picture here, I'm not sure if that means that it's easy for it to get mold. I, I'm not sure because it's average humidity. But I mean, if you had a, a dehumidifier or something, it's probably something you can work with. Yeah. But yeah, if I if I was thinking about the northern part of Japan, I would probably put this kind of on a list somewhere to go and look at. It's a an interesting little area. It's quite remote, stuck out here on, on the tip of this peninsula, just underneath Hokkaido. It's got the Hell Lake. Um, it doesn't have massive mountains. It is quite flat, but it seems like quite an easy place to live because of that. There's not a lot of, I guess, risk of some things because of that. I'll finish just by uh, showing you this this lake. It really is quite interesting. It's a bit otherworldly. It's a volcanic lake, and it's got a lot of Buddhist significance that makes it a place that some people want to go to and some people don't ever want to go to. Uh, it is a very, uh, there's a, there's a certain group of people that it's, I may be disrespectful to mention, but it's a place that certain people go to for certain Buddhist reasons. And because of that, uh, things like this bridge and what it represents and like this, this river is kind of the, the river of hell. It's like the river sticks. Um, that's the kind of place that is nearby. And it's, it's kind of, it's cool to me to have that sort of thing around this sort of culturally significant stuff, which is why I like living around Mount Horaiji around here. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that bit of window shopping and I'll, I'll put links to these different websites in the description. It's a kind of way where if I was looking for an Akia, this is some of the first steps I would take of figuring out what's the house like, the age, the what's the land like, the risks, um, things like that. Uh, there is, speaking of hazards and things, I should check. We already saw one hazard map, but we can have a look for some more risk areas here. Okay, no, so it doesn't actually have anything that shows up on the, the main Japanese hazard map, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so it's a reasonably hazard-free house. It's pretty modern. You just have to look out for flooding and ground liquefaction, but, uh, liquefaction, but the land looks manageable. It's flat farmland. The price is, you know, take this and add an extra um, $10,000 to it. So it might be something like 80,000 in the end, but it comes with a reasonable amount of land and a reasonable amount of rooms. The area seems nice. It's nice and isolated away from big towns. I would definitely shortlist it. But yeah, hopefully you've, um, you've found that somewhat interesting and have seen how things, you know, might work if you're looking for Akia and the type of sites you should use. I This is a bit of a rambly first one because I want to see if anyone's interested in this kind of thing. So if, uh, if you would like to see me do another one of these, let me know in the comments. It's fun for me to have a look around at random places and try and learn more about the areas. Yeah, thank you for watching.